Hi, everyone. Welcome to SSC Live Campus Tour. We are the students from AIS, Association for International Students. Uh, hi, my name is Parisha, and I'm a second year of the Policy of Management faculty, and I'm from Indonesia. Hi, I'm Gordon. I'm a second year from Canada, and I'm from the Faculty of Environment in I'm Tatsu, third year, and uh, same faculty as him, Faculty of Environment and Information Studies. My name is Ivanka. I'm also a second year Indonesian student from the Faculty of Environment and Food Studies. Today, we will show you around campus to show you uh, to help you get familiar with your home for the next four years. Let's go! So, as you come to campus, you'll be greeted with or actually the students and alumni who participated in the social events this year. So, uh, we have a wide variety of students partaking in a diverse variety of activities here at the yeah. Okay, so to your right, we have the Alpha Building, which is an office for the international affairs. So, especially if you are a an international student, this is where you'll get all your information, such as your classes and um, scholarships and a lot of different things that you have to do once you get to Japan, such as getting your resi residence card. Yeah, in addition to this, you can talk to uh, and right now we're approaching the media center, uh, which is over there. Uh, Can you show them? And media center basically functions as a all-in-one facility uh, for a wide variety of activities that can be performed for uh, and by students and faculty members. Of the so, if you enter the media center, make sure you have your student card ID card with you at all times. And as you approach the entrance, you, you have to make sure you scan your ID card like this to be able to access the building as well. So over here, there's a reference desk. You can inquire about anything uh, over here as well. And these are just printers and computers that anyone, any student can use for free. Uh, and they're equipped with the, the licensed Adobe and Microsoft technology and software so that students can work on their projects freely from the comfort of this room. Over here is a simple lounge area where students can work, have meetings, uh, and there's even a vending machine here where students can buy Kale, Kale's own brand of water, Kale water. Another set of workstations, computer workstations, and printers that students can use. Uh, these are actually provided with uh, headphones uh, and even simple keyboards. So you can even do audio audio work from here as well. These are just more tables students can look at. And what's great about this building, and as a student in general, is the AV counter over here. Uh, where students can actually rent hardware such as digital cameras uh, and laptops and more video uh, equipment uh, freely if they have their ID card. And up here is actually the stairs to the upper floor, which contains a library and multiple, uh, a wide variety of books that students can rent and read. And here is actually the timeline of SFC. Uh, from the beginning up to 2020. So over here is the start of the, the 3D printers section where students can use, use them freely for their own projects and whatever they want to print. And here is the main center of the, of the 3D printers, which is also called the Fab Center. There's even sewing equipment, there's printers and more 3D printers. There's a wide variety of different brands that students can choose to use whichever they feel most, most comfortable with. And a lot of classes at SFC actually provide you the opportunity to use these printers. But unfortunately, due to COVID, uh, we have not been able to use them thus far, but since everyone is vaccinated now, all the students are vaccinated, next semester should be back on campus and we should be able to use them next semester. Okay. So, 
um, let's go back out and make our way to the Yukichi Sat. Yukichi Tsukuzawa is the founder of Seo and oh yeah, he contributed greatly to the development of the education system in Japan. Here, there's a statue. Students usually take a picture here before they graduate, so be sure to see it. Nikita Kuzawa is also printed on the 10,000 bill of Japanese yen, oh, yeah. as you can see here. right over here. And that's a that, This explains how great our founder of the school is, right? Yeah. Okay, so right now we are making our way to the Kamuite or the Gulliver Pond, which is something that you can only find in the sea. There are a lot of ducks in the Kamuike pond, and they usually just roam around there and breathe. Students also usually eat lunch there, and also since classes are hybrid nowadays, me personally, I like to take my classes near the Kamuike because it is very breezy, and I feel like I can concentrate more if I take my classes from there. Um, so near the Kamuike, there is also a subway from, um, there is also a subway where you can eat lunch and get a bite from. When you are a student at KOSSC and you know that you'll be a regular at subway, then you should definitely get a membership card for it. Who is the Kamuike? If you've been paying, paying attention to the back of a shirt, you can see that there's actually two points there. And the pond is why is the reason why. So Isha, are there any other food alternatives here? Yeah. So there is a cafeteria building right over there where you can um where you can buy lunch for quite cheap and there's also a convenience store called Lawson that is right over there as well. So if you want to buy some unigiri or some bread, you can definitely drop by there to grab a quick bite. There's also a co-op shop, isn't there? Yeah, there's also a co-op shop that um, sells a lot of Teo merchandise, such as the sweaters and the pants, joggers, that is very, very comfortable. Be sure to buy it to rub your Teo pride. So now we are about to go to the building. So over here, you actually see four buildings. They're named Kappa, Iota, um, Omicron, and Epsilon. So these buildings are actually structured and placed in such a way that they spell out the name KO. And it's in these buildings is where you'll be taking most of your classes as well as having some of your research projects. There's also a building called Lambda, which directly translates to language where you will be having your foreign language classes. In these classes, there are rooms that have computers that you will be taking your FIT classes in. And there's also a room on the second floor of IOTA where you can use a pair you utilize. Speaking of FIT, what do you guys think? What is FIT? So FIT is the basic industry starts to programming. Uh, and currently we are studying Frankfurt and FIT. And it just provides you with the basics so that you can touch up to programming even if you're new to the language or programming in general. So what do you, what's your opinion on that? Well, if you have never touched computers and programming in general, then I suggest you to go on internet and do some research to prepare yourself because some of the exercises in FIT classes are actually challenging. It pushes you to grow, you know, develop uh, strong fundamentals in programming. So yeah, if you want to grow, make some, you know, I don't know, build some, can you help me out? <laughs> Um, very simple code that you can learn quite fast. FIT is one of the mandatory classes that you would have to take. So, yeah, I feel like, at least for me, 
it is quite challenging, but it does push me to learn about something new and it pushes me out of my comfort zone. Yeah. So, teacher, I know you're in the policy management, policy management right? Yeah, so, I am. How are the questions there? So, I am quite interested in business myself. So, right now, I am trying to apply to a kimchi guy or a seminar that is focused on business. And other than that, I am also taking some business classes such as workshop in new business creation and management of emerging businesses. What so, about you guys? So as you just mentioned, uh, the way Kimchi comes actually stands for in English and we got a seminar lab, uh, where students can conduct uh, research with their teachers and senpais uh, and perform actual hands-on uh, activities and research that can benefit them in the future. So, for example, what are you uh, researching about? So, as for me, I'm in the quantum pinky card, uh, and I was able to join in my first year alone, uh, early in my first year. And we study quantum computing, and we get some hands-on experience that Trio actually has some of their own quantum computers. So, there's a question from YouTube by ABK. Um, they asked, how much time do you spend in Tanky Cry seminars versus classes? Tati, maybe you can answer that. Uh, well, uh, if you are already like focusing on one topic and you want to dig further into that, then I guess you can uh, go 100% in Tanky Cry and spend less time in other classes. But if you are like most other students, like you have, you don't have any specific topic yet, then I suggest you to take various classes because SSC provides diverse, you know, fields of classes. So that's gonna help you. That's gonna help you learn more about what you actually want, and then you can find which seminar you want to take. I think I can personally relate to that. Coming into KO, I did not know exactly what I wanted to do, but right now I'm actually taking a business tanky side and planning to join an IT one. So in KO, it gives you the opportunity to mix all of your interests together. So you don't have to be stuck to one today. Exactly. If we can keep trying, uh, don't don't feel like you are stuck to one You can you can do multiple kinky ties and you can uh, feel free to switch between kinky ties if you find that you're more interested in another topic. Yeah, so, in, in fact, I originally was taking a kinky tie for biology made like biology related stuff to do experiments. But then I found myself more interested in computer science. So now I'm taking both at the same time. What is this building? So we slowly approached to the top, known as the graduate school building. And it is known for that because the upper floors are actually used by graduate students from the Graduate School of Governance and Media for their own personal projects. Uh, and actually, over here as well, this building also houses the other other uh, other uh, offices, such as the Office of Research Administration, uh, which supports research activities at SFC. Uh, so, if you're planning to do your master's at SFC at the Graduate School of Governance and Media, uh, be prepared to spend a lot of time in this building for your, your projects. Well, if you are passionate enough to do your own research at early stage of your university career, we can also come here and do some work here. Actually, my research group has a lab here. So I visit here often and study about computer science. So talking more about students live, we do have this thing called circles in SSC. So does anyone want to explain what circles are? So circles are basically clubs, but less rig rigorous uh, in nature. And it's basically a group where you can meet friends and uh, perform activities of the same, same interest. So actually, all three of us right now are currently in an English circle called JES, with Husky being the leader. So do you want to talk yeah, about it? Yeah, OK. So oh, yeah. Uh, there are a lot of circles in SSC, but two, there are two main international, international circles. One is the, wait, what was it? Association for International Students, which is the circle that is doing this orientation right now. And, and also JES, which is 
Japanese, English, and sports circle. Well, as the name suggests, we play sports, invite different people, like including Japanese or people who speak English or whatever. Okay, uh, gather everybody and then play multiple sports just to have fun. So if you guys are interested, feel free to contact me. Yes, exactly. There's also a lot of different Japanese circles in Kyo, and I encourage international students to join these circles because it gives an opportunity for us to talk to native Japanese people and improve our Japanese. Um, speaking of circles, you can't see from here exactly, but uh, those areas are for circle activities. So there are like actual buildings for uh, circles. And if you apply for it, you can get a room for your own circle. Oh, you can even make your own circle, you know? So JES, uh, it wasn't made actually by me, but my senpai, oh, what's a senpai? Upperclassman. Oh yeah, upperclassman. Uh, he applied for it and then made it into a circle. So um, if you want to start a new international circle, Go for it. Mm -hmm. So there's another question from YouTube. Um, ABK said, do you take classes or Kinkikai with Japanese students? Well, for Kinkikai, it depends on the Kinkikai itself. There are some Kinkikai which only have Japanese students inside them. There are some Kinkikai with both English and Japanese students. Yes. Uh, but a majority of them are open to both English speaking and Japanese speaking students. So mm -hmm. feel free to uh, look into different Kinkikai and inquire about them if you have any questions. Exactly. So for all of these classes, they are open to both international and Japanese students. In Giga classes, which are English classes, Japanese students are definitely welcome to take the classes. And in Japanese classes, as long as your Japanese reaches a sufficient level, you will be able to take more Japanese classes. Uh, actually, be sure to check the syllabus for Kinky Guys because they list down the proficiency, Japanese proficiency that you need for each, um, I say, like reading, writing, listening. Uh, they will list down what kind of Japanese that you need for each part. So be sure to check out the syllabus. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely, though, uh, there are more options for Japanese Kinky Guys. So that, that's going to be one of your motivations to study Japanese, right? Exactly. Exactly. So, should we move on to the next building? Alright. So, the next building that we're approaching is the Delta building. So, I would say it's one of the most unique buildings here at SFP because it's actually composed of mainly just glass. Um, this, this building hosts a variety of equipment as well for technology and uh, thinking guys. So basically, the RG group of Pinky Kites, which is a group composed of many computer science and technological Pinky Kites, uh, formed a group called the RG group. Uh, and a majority of their research activities and work and meetings are composed in this building. So as you can see over here already, through the glass, there's, uh, there's many offices and workstations. Uh, since a lot of people perform uh, the work here for long sessions at a time, and some even stay overnight to perform the work. Because in King's Guys, we're actually performing actual research that can be useful for the future. Right, so this is the and there is a north entrance and a south entrance. So let's go through the south entrance. And students can just access this very easily. Uh, no student ID for this one. Either. Be sure to not make too much noise when you're in here because People could be studying or working uh, So we make ourselves make our way upstairs. This is where a majority of teachers' workspaces and students' workspaces are at. 
In fact, you can even bring your own workstation and your own PC setup to this, this building and set up your own mini office here. So as for Mike and Kikai, which is the Aqua Advanced Quantum uh, Research Group, uh, we actually have some quantum equipment here as well. And we're actually setting up, or we're planning to, uh, get a quantum optics machine here as well. So here are just a variety of different research projects that RG Group has worked on before and are currently working on. This is the office workspace that people are working on. So there's a lot going on here at any time, but you can see. And uh, feel free to visit here and join the RG Group. Yeah, so there is another question from YouTube. And um, Hika Hashimoto asked about how much of students are English speaking. So in each batch of Giga students, they usually accept about 50 to 60 students. And the rest of the students are either Japanese or are applying from the overseas admissions. So while only 50 to 60 people are Giga students, there are some other students that are also English speaking or international students as well. So out of the classes so far, classes that you've taken so far, mm -hmm. what would you say are your favorites? Um, at least the class that I took this semester was interactive design, mm -hmm. and that class allowed us to kind of explore creativity and AI, which was a field that I was kind of new to, but I was interested in both. So it was really interesting. And we learned about things like NFT and using uh, general adversarial network. So I thought that was a really interesting class that really brought in my perspective. What about you? Well, as for me, since I do enjoy programming, I took FIT2, which is the second uh, class of the Fundamentals of Information Technology course. Uh, and it taught me a lot about, just a lot more in depth about programming, Python, and we got to make our own games with uh, the game engine called Pixel. So I thought it was a, it brought a lot of depth to programming in general and some applications that programming can be used to. Yeah. So how about you? So for myself, we, I recently took a class called Basic Product Design. And this is something that I'm new to. And this is, I think, a pattern that you can always see in SSD because it lets you explore many, many different fields so that you can truly find out what your interests are. Now, in basic product design, we, we designed a lot of different simple products and used 3D modeling and rendering. Um, and since it was new to me, it was very fun to learn. And also, the professor is amazing. So, oh, um, usually, where do students live if they go to SDLC? Do they live in dorms, live in apartments? Well, around this area in general, Eshonanda, uh, there's, there's multiple dorms that you can apply to and live at. Um, for me, I personally live at a dorm called Nojiku, which is very close to Shonanda Uh Can you tell us about where you personally live in? I live in Dormi Konosujisawa too, which is kind of midway between the station and the campus. So usually I bike to the campus. There's also a new campus here, right? Built really newly right next to campus. And it's called, it's called the Dormitory for International Students and it's owned by Teo. So there's uh, some questions in YouTube. And Emily Young asks, other than Kinku Kais, what kind of classes did you guys students take? So Giga students, a uh, Giga course provides two different streams of classes called quality management classes and environment and information studies. So environment and information studies classes usually lean more to programming and also environmentally conscious classes, such as some of um, interaction design and ergonomic design. Meanwhile, policy management classes focuses on building policy for um, countries for different systems and also business. Uh, don't forget that you can also take classes from other campuses. Yep. And if some ask, are there classes conduct? Are there classes conducted online due to COVID? Uh, 
for last semester, uh, most classes, or well, at the beginning, most classes were hybrid. So some were online and some were offline. Uh, but due to COVID getting worse in Japan, most classes had to be moved back to online, which is very unfortunate. But uh, throughout the summer, most of the students at KO have been vaccinated by the university. So we are expecting that next semester, most classes should be back to on campus. But still, there are some students who cannot come to Japan yet. So for next semester, I'm assuming that the KO University will also provide online campus in addition to normal on campus classes. So in conclusion, the classes would be hybrid, where people can take it online, but also offline as well. And there's last question. Do you receive any scholarships? I, the most amazing you can do. So there's actually two ways that you can apply for a scholarship. One is through the government of your respective country, and the other through KO. And I think going through KO is probably the easiest process, because the way to apply for a scholarship is actually the same way that you're applying to KO. All you have to do is click for an extra button. So make sure that you check that out and do research about it, uh, because they do have like GPA requirements. Uh, but yeah, you can apply for a scholarship at the same time you apply to pay. I want to clarify one thing if we have time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so we talked about scholarship just now, but um, there is a difference between international students and Japanese, like people who have Japanese passports, but coming back to Japan from uh, overseas school. Even though those Japanese people seem like uh, they're international because they're applying through GIGA. Uh, in KO, they are seen as ordinary Japanese students. So she is uh, she applied to international student scholarship. But people like me, I, I have Japanese passport but came back from China. And I was going to apply to international student scholarship, but I couldn't. So for those people, um, be sure to check out not the international student scholarship, but scholarship for native Japanese students. Okay, so last question, I think, because um, we're running out of time. Do we have a halal menu in our cafeteria? I'm, oh, we... I'm pretty sure we have some vegetarian options. And, but other than that, I think most of the menu is not halal, so you would probably have to buy lunch from convenience stores or pack your own lunch. Or Subway vegetarian. Or Subway vegetarian. Yeah, we have Subway. Yeah, I think that's it for our campus tour. Any last words? Uh, thank you guys for watching. Coming to the tour. I hope you guys are excited to come to KLSSC. Excited to see you there. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining along. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>